Welcome to End the Calm. I'm your host, Georgiana Alexander. Welcome back to In the Calm. I'm Georgiana Alexander, your host, you guys. So good to see you again. I'm so excited to jump into this week's discussion. For me right now, what I've been working on is a whole new rebrand. And if you don't know, if you're new here, branding is kind of my jam. It's a passion. I've been a startup and brand and business consultant for a few decades now. And I love it. But even before I started getting into consulting or working on branding or business building and growth, it was something I was so passionate about business identity, personal identity, and the ways that the materials and assets that we create can really translate what it is that we want to say. A lot like, you know, if you love fashion or styling, it's exactly the same thing. The way that what we wear, or maybe if you love reading, you know, what you read, how all of that, the way you communicate your essence out into the world. And I love looking at that with personal brand as well as business branding. And so I've been working on my own rebranding and changing around a lot of what I'm doing over chaos and calm, my wellness brand, as well as my personal consulting and mentorship site is going to be a whole new launch. And so I thought that it would be really cool to get into a conversation about the way that I view branding and have really utilized an energetic approach to branding and business building throughout my whole career and life and how that impacts so much. So to kind of rewind the storyline a bit and like introduce you to where things started for me with that and really quick, because I really want to get into the juicy stuff. But I think my love of branding really began because I grew up in an entrepreneurial family where branding and the identity that we created was huge. I mean, it wasn't something that was talked about during that time. It didn't have the same language of branding, but marketing, you know, the way that we chose certain fonts or copy for businesses with my mom, which I started going and hanging out in her offices when I was about five. And I loved it. It wasn't just hanging out with her. I just loved the energy and the buzz of like what they were doing and how the materials and the marketing and the components of what they did is being able to see that transformation and seeing how that grew not only their business but impacted their clients lives so I just loved that so deeply and I also love fashion and art and language and may have a little bit of an obsession over fonts as well <laughs> maybe maybe not but most likely yes um, but so when I started getting into really working in family businesses and branding, like super young, you know, even as early as like 15 and things like that, I was doing different projects and working alongside some pretty big name companies as I grew older and actually finished college and things like that. But I had the chance to work with companies like Carrie Winston and do some projects with Whole Foods, as well as a lot of other startups that you may or may not have heard of, because even though they were scaled, it's not something, you know, brand name that you would know of, but it was so fun to get to be a part. I've also had the experiences of having my work copycatted by competitors or even partners. So on the one hand, that sucked. It hurt so much. It was like a big dagger in my gut because I had created something that felt so aligned for what I was working on with one of my family companies. And to see the owner of this partner company, like just kind of flip out over this branding when he saw it, when it was introduced to him. And then to see this huge international company that he was head of basically take that and run with it. And, you know, it was really sharp and painful, but then to flip that narrative and be able to say, wow, look at the wings that that concept had. Look at how it really transformed the brand and identity of that business and of that company into something more luxurious. And that's actually how they started rebranding it was more in a luxury setting as opposed to it had not been that way up until that point. So on one hand, it sucked. On the other hand, I'm like, well, 
it just validated how awesome that concept was and really gave proof of concept in my mind. But luckily that has not happened very often. But so it feels really good when you create something that you love and that visually really represents the essence of you or your client or your business. So as I'm in the middle of this process for myself for like the umpteenth time, but I thought that it would be really cool to kind of just do a little quickie conversation and break down some of these pieces if maybe branding is new to you or branding energetics because also with my background in energetics and as a seer and dimensional shaman, I think intuitively I really took so much of that energetic information and what I wanted to convey and magnetize and attract for either my businesses or for clients and, and customers and things like that. And really build that into or bake that into the identity. And it made such a huge difference. It really became something more tangible and this role, it became an experience and like a magnetism that really took on its own life where that's what you always hope for, right? As you're growing your identity, your personal brand, your business brand, that is really where my thinking of branding kind of came in. And as I look at my current rebrand in my personal brand and in my business, what I'm looking at is a couple of things. I really am wanting to build identity that's seamless with who I am as a person. And why that's so important for me is because I've spent a lot of my life doing things behind the scenes and allowing one part of my identity to kind of be the front facing, but really the majority of what it is that I'm doing, thinking, experiencing, feeling be behind the scenes. And what that means to me is that the energetics of what I've been doing, the way that I've been able to do things, my essence and energy, the pieces that really are so magnetic, when I unleash them and I let them really shine bright in the world, those pieces were kind of held back behind this other identity that I had created. And that was really for safety and protection, right? I was in a lot of industries that were male dominated, nothing against my guys out there. But in those industries, there were certain kind of unspoken rules to the way that you showed up, like in finance industry and in certain business industries, it felt more zipped up. And so in order to have that entrance into those places, I felt like I needed to mirror and reflect that. And in truth, it was really actually shutting me down from my own magnetism. And yes, I was successful and am successful and found success in the things that I put my efforts into. But at the same time, I felt suffocated because it wasn't allowing my true self to exist. So there was always this kind of rotation of burnout, right? Like when we're not being true to ourselves, no matter how beautiful something is, how glossy or glamorous it looks, there's always going to be something that feels empty or disconnected. And that's true, whether it's business, personal, like it doesn't matter across the board, you're going to feel that and hit those walls. If it's not also just like the breath of who you are. So every time I make new changes with rebranding or with what I'm doing, my my goal and my intention that I set, and we're going to circle back to intention setting and why that's important, especially in energetic branding, is to always breathe more of myself into that brand to where it's effortless, to where it's so seamless as a part of who I am and what you're getting to experience so that when we work together, when we meet and connect, it all makes sense. It's like, yes, that's what I felt, you know? And I love that when I experience brands as well, personal brands and or like, you know, really cool product brands or online brands. It doesn't matter across the board. This is true. So where I begin, and I'm going to kind of speak about this, like in the lens of if you're looking at this for a client, because sometimes even when you're looking at yourself, it's easier to get a sense of yourself when you can kind of put on a different lens, a different perspective. And so sometimes I'll step back from me creating for me and I'll put on the lens of if I were doing this for a client because it gives me a lot more room to kind of play around and feel into what's going to feel right and also 
give myself permission to play because that's really important as well to know, especially since I'm doing it for myself, that we get oftentimes locked into this idea that maybe we have to like set one identity up and then never change from that. I know even me, I'm guilty of that. And then I remind myself like laughingly, like, are you kidding, Georgia? You like, of course we can change. Look how many lives we've lived to this point. Of course we can be, you know, always in motion and always in evolution. Where I began and where it's really fun to kind of take these notes down and start with yourself as you're looking at your branding is finding the vision, the voice or the inspiration. What is it that you're creating and why? And this doesn't have to go super deep. I mean, it can if you want to. It can be totally a personal development (laughs) project as well. But sometimes it's better to stay a little bit on the observer side of that so that you don't get so weighted down into the project unless this is the first time you're ever looking at this for yourself in which case dive deep honey so all right finding the vision the voice and the inspiration so what is it that feels so exciting and inspiring by this like what lights you up about what you're building and what you're doing first of all get clear on that okay and then when you have that Put that aside and then just kind of put on some fun music and take notes like maybe cozy up with your favorite coffee or tea or whatever it is and figure out what visuals inspire you. Like, are there certain colors, movies, sounds, fashion, travel? Like, put it all in. Don't limit it to something that's associated to your brand or to maybe a competitor that does something like this. Like, really just look at what inspired you the most in life. Like, what feels so good to you that you just want to dive into, that you want to wear it, you want to live that lifestyle. And you know that like that would feel so amazing if that is something that you too could create or live in or express through. It could be textures, again, colors, smells, sound, use all of your sensory and really have fun with it and just make some notes and start to like pinpoint for you what really inspires your sensory what lights your feeling up and helps motivate and inspire you. Because this is important. This is a a really important part of branding energetics is because especially if this is something that you're creating for yourself or even through your clients. If if you're doing this for your clients, then definitely you want to find out what it is for them that inspires them. Like you need to like work that into you know, what inspired them about setting up this business? What are they looking to achieve? Like, what's the feeling texture? Like, find that their favorite music or song, find the pieces that paint the visual picture of who they are, like what really lights them up, what inspires them and motivates them. And just put it all in there. Like, what's your favorite meal? What's your favorite food? What's your favorite restaurant? You know, what's your favorite fashion for all my fashion girlies? That's a big one for me because I can always pinpoint a style or a mood or a time period or like certain cities and like seriously identify with that. And so personally, even if I'm branding for other people, I look at what city would represent their brand, like what feels most like them. And then why? Like, what are the pieces? Because obviously we could all go to the same city, say Paris, and have as many of us that are going on that trip have different experiences, like night and day different experiences. So it's really important, like, okay, if you're going to Paris and this is a city that like super inspires you emotionally, visually, sensory, what's that experience? Like what song is it that's playing? You know, where are you visiting? What are you wearing? How are you traveling? Are you traveling via backpack or do you have like a personal tour guide and bag handler and shopping assistant? Like which, which way are you going? Like super adventurer mode or luxe mode? And chances are you know this instantly, right? It's just sometimes we don't stop to put those pieces into structure. So that's what we want to do is kind of take awareness and look at the pieces. And now once you've compiled all of these things that 
feel like really visually inspiring to you or to your client. We want to look at the energy of it. And again, that's where we pull back and look at our overview and our lens and perspective of like, you know, not so up close. It's like when you look at art too closely, sometimes you miss a lot of the details of it. You need to have different lens focus, right? You need to go back and look at it and then get really close on it and move back and forth with your visual perspective so that you can kind of get a different feeling of it. So when we're looking at the energy of it, what I mean is like, why does this feel amazing? What makes you want to roll around in it and eat it up and live this life? Like just what comes to mind, like quick fire, like what feels so good about the energy of this experience, like of what it is that you've just written down that inspires you, like what feels good about that? And then how does that translate to this vision that you have for your brand? How can you marry and match the two? Why do they work together, right? You want to create an experience for your clients or customers. So the way that I also like to look at this is if they were walking into your shop or your office or your place of business or even your home. What does that feel like? And maybe not your home currently. Like maybe it's a mess. Maybe you have laundry everywhere or maybe you have a dream home that you're not quite living in yet. Whatever the case is, envision it as what it is that you want to create. Like if it were your no budget, like no limitations of what you could build and create where you could just have your dream experience for your client or your customer to walk into. And you've built this, this is where you're living or working, or this is like where they're walking into. What does that experience feel like? From the second that they walk through the door, what's the customer experience like for them? And just dream in that, like see would someone be there to greet them? Like, what's the tone? Or is it more casual and cool? You know, like, welcome in kind of a thing. You know, what what does that experience feel like? What do you want them to walk away feeling? And what's the transformation that you know that your brand is going to create for that, right? Don't be afraid of descriptives. Like, get really descriptive. Get really nitty gritty in this experience with them. So that's your next step, right? Okay. And then, so once you have like all of this information, something super fun, I'm very visual. I love creating things. I love mood boards. So just the same way as if you're working on a photo shoot or you're working with a team for a photo shoot, you know, we build mood boards so that we all are on the same page with like what's represented for the visuals, the brand, the style, the look, the makeup, the different pieces of what's going into say a photo shoot. I like to do mood boards as well for a brand. And this can get really creative. Like I love making sure that, you know, the fonts, thinking about the font the colors, but also even before I get into that nitty gritty, I'm creating like this mood board slash vision board of this brand. Let me clarify that because when I say vision board, I'm not meaning, you know, your manifestation vision board of what you want to build in this business or what your clients want to build, but really the visuals of, again, like we're talking about like all of the pieces that you just created for your branding, right? What the inspiration is, what the energy is, what the atmosphere is, what you're creating for your customer or your clients, the visuals of that. And maybe there's certain like textures or travel places like, and what I mean textures is like, maybe there's bamboo because somehow that represents something that, you know, means something to you with your clients. It doesn't have to make sense to anybody else. It's what inspires you to creatively see this mood board and think, yes, that is exactly the feeling of this brand and what I want to create. And it gives you the visual, it gives you the emotional, like the feeling, the sensory. It's a reminder of all of the pieces that you've just developed and discovered. And it doesn't have to be large either. It can be the size of just a regular piece of paper, eight and a half by 11. It could be a lot larger. You can go to town with this and have so much fun. But again, this is a distinction. Doing a mood or creative board is a different experience than doing a vision board, manifestation board for what it is that you're wanting to create in your business and brand. Because this is really the visual design look and feel of this brand, right? Okay, have fun with that. <laughs> Create your world. Enjoy it. Dive into it. And now I want to share as well about 
setting the intention. The reason this is super important, especially through the lens of what I've created and built like with frequency and energetics of branding and really having that branding be a piece of growth and scale and magnetism, right? So when we set our intentions, we're creating a seed. We're planting these seeds of energy that's encoded with everything this business and this brand can have, right? That it can be, that it can exist as. So it's almost like taking in a moment before you make, say, a birthday wish, where you close your eyes and you think about everything that you know that you want to wish for. And then you focus your energy to blow that candle out. Well, instead of focusing your energy to blow that candle out, you're going to create an energetic seed with all of the information of your brand and just envision all of the pieces coming together, what you have downloaded or felt intuitively or that your soul is really calling you for that was what led you to create this brand. Or if this is for your client, then think about it through the lens of why they're doing it. So it can still be that you're creating this seed for their branding as well. But we want to create this seed of intention of what it is that this brand is holding the space for, of what it's getting ready to birth and be and build or rebirth, build and grow into, right? Next chapter. So whatever that is, take the moment with all of this in front of you. You know, you've got your mood board. You've got all of your pieces of this creation. You can feel it. It's tangible to you. And set that intention to let it birth. Set that seed of really allowing that to create energetically this container and structure for everything that your brand is. So even if it's an online brand or you're doing coaching or you're creating something new, or even if you're not quite sure what you're doing yet, but you know, you're creating the visual for what's coming, something you feel, maybe you don't even know all the pieces of it yet. That's okay. Let it be what it is that you know it has the potential to be. Let that seed that wish, that intention set energetically in place within this brand. Okay. Reach out if you've got questions about that piece. I think you've got it. It's pretty clear, right? And what happens when we set these intentions and this energetic coding, right? It, Like I said, you're creating a container, an energetic container and a frequency match that you're setting in place this intention, which has extreme power, it's, you know, going to not only help you build what it is that you're in process of building and creating or growing, right? If you already have something in motion, but you're creating a container for it to magnetize and attract everything of that same frequency and energetic. So keep that in mind as you're going through this process as well. Like the game of it is to allow it to resonate on a frequency level with its match, right? So who is it that you're drawing in? What's the transformation that you're creating for the people that are attracted to your brand and for what reason? When you bake all of that into the intention and into the branding, it makes it so fierce, so magnetic. And I've literally seen people's businesses absolutely skyrocket using this. And I know it sounds so simple, but it's a really simple yet extremely powerful tool of really being clear about the intention. And not only just intention of, oh yeah, I think this, this is what it needs to be, but really feeling it energetically, allowing that to create. So you're planting this seed that has feeling, it has all the visuals, like you're really getting juicy in all the details of what the inspiration is. So you're amplifying your vision, you're amplifying its potency, and then you're setting that intention and then hands open and surrendering it and letting it grow into this beautiful thing that you're helping to hold space for, right? So that's the beginning steps 
when we're talking about the frequency and energetics of branding. So yeah, reach out again if you have any questions about that part. I want to hear if you want more details, if you want to get juicier into that conversation. But okay, let's wrap up like by getting into the fun part. And that's actually designing, right? So now you've got all of the pieces. Now throw on the song that's inspiring to you, the type of music that's inspiring and hop on Canva. If you're not familiar with Adobe, that's okay. Don't don't rock your head over it. Believe me, I learn that and I unlearn it all the time. Like it just, it's like one of those things. But you can just as easily get things done on Canva or hire out Fiverr, Fiverr.com to get people on board for what your visual is. But jump into the design process and have fun exploring the fonts that really match exactly this feel, right? Like what's going to really create the visual that matches energetically exactly all of this other creation that you've laid the foundation work for. Match the font so that and play around with what feels really, really good and attractive to you. And then you can build out your logo and your visuals, you know, your content for social media or any of your marketing materials, your site, whatever it is that you're building. This is the really fun part, I think, anyway, of getting to like nitty gritty, get into the details of what matches. And it's really fun when you have kind of like those games where you are trying to match, you know, square to square, circle to circle. And obviously, like as you, when you're a kid, if you match it up, the circle doesn't fit into the square hole, right? So it's kind of like that now that you have the energetic information of your brand and then the visual information of your brand, when you're looking at fonts or looking at logos or, you know, other design elements to that, or going a step further as you're in your brand and business creating when you're creating your content, when you're making your offers, or when you're developing, you know, your product online, you can really reference back this framework for branding energetics for the visuals that you've created from this place of feeling of energy of visual and intention and get a stronger sense of does this feel aligned or not? You know, is it a square trying to fit into the circle? Or is it a square and a square? Does it feel like, yep, that's the winner. So it makes it really clear when you are matching something that doesn't really feel good and aligned. It doesn't sit right. It feels off, right? And you may need some practice on what that feels like. But, you know, again, for my fashion girlies, I know for me, it always comes back to the fashion look, right? I love finding the look that's perfect for the event or the party and playing in that. And so I think for me, that's what I always always associate finding the perfect branding for myself or for a client is like that perfect outfit, you know, all the right pieces and accessories. And it just amplifies your essence, amplifies your efforts and makes that experience that you're moving into, or in this case, your growth in your business and your client transformation, whether it's product, online business, or whatever that may be, that you are just magnifying that essence, magnifying that transformation. So I hope that this has been a fun conversation for you. I know it's like a quick little mini episode on branding energetics and reach out and let me know if you want to dive more into these little nuggets of business hacks or how to's or anything else in business. You know, I love getting into the nitty gritty, operational, tech side, branding, creative side, growth strategies, all of that is so, so fun. So I know a lot of you guys love to talk about this in branding, but this is something where, you know, again, so many of the branding campaigns and projects that I've worked on have had legs and growth that people around or competitors or whatever were really surprised by. And when I look back, it's because of this. It's because not only was it visually appealing, but there was more going into it. It was the energetics and the intention that was creating that experience. And it drew in not only a lot of attention, but a lot of business and a lot of fast amplified growth. And so playing around with this is a really fun way to get dialed into that growth flow for yourself as well. It may seem silly or light or playful, but why shouldn't it be right? That's the fun of it. So I hope you have 
fun in your next branding adventure and stick around and stay tuned. Make sure you subscribe to see the next iteration 2.0. I mean, really, I think it's probably 5.0 at this point with chaos and calm and my personal branding for the mentorship and coaching and consulting and things like that. So reach out if you've got any questions or if you want to dive deeper into a topic. I want to hear from you guys what's going on. I love to hear where you're at and tap into the things that I can share from my experiences, both in business and as a seer and shaman to help make the journey more fun and easier for you as well. So have a beautiful week. Cannot wait to see you next week. And I'll talk to you soon, friends. 